So I started coming to meetings and right away what struck me was the ambiance of an EMS meeting. These were friendly people. There were no barriers by country boundaries, language boundaries, uh, gender boundaries, uh, political boundaries, religious boundaries, no boundaries, no fences. There shouldn't be. No. And if other endeavors of humans could see what we do in the EMGS, maybe, and follow that, maybe we'd have less trouble in some other areas. I came here as Leona Sampson's student, and that was 1991. And, um, it was, you know, a little intimidating and exciting to be part of a meeting. And I had my poster and several people came by, including Susan Wallace and Scylla Cooper and Graham Walker. And they made me feel like my research was really exciting and important. And it made a huge difference to how I felt about my own work. And they also um, became mentors. And I think this is the thing that I think the EMGS was most valuable for me was uh, regularly seeing people who are leaders in the field, learning from them, being inspired by them, and getting their advice and support. It was, it's always been a really huge part of my career just to come here on a regular basis. Part of the strength is, is our diverse mix of government, academia and industry and in in a way that's difficult because we're all in our different silos in our different groups but it gives us um, an opportunity to learn and it's very dynamic if we can make it work right pretty much all my jobs uh, are because of the people I met at the EMS you can have an impact in society like EMGS uh, just by putting your hand up. I mean, uh, people are waiting for you to volunteer, actually. When Tom Wilson had asked me to help as co-chair, new investigator co-chair, uh, cemented the fact that this society is very welcoming to um, younger scientists who are coming up from graduate school, postdoc, and, and in the early stage career of faculty. The opportunity to gain leadership positions, huge impact on my career. Um, you know, they, you know, I was recently promoted to professor, and I assure you, being president of this society was a very substantial uh, mark in my plus category. <laughs> um, I achieved the, you know, uh, national leadership recognition and position. When when people come, they don't come to a meeting room; they come to visit friends and they learn a lot in the way. So I think that EMGS is important for the collaboration of people. As a graduate student and postdoc, I was always very nervous to ask questions at meetings like this, at national meetings. And I, the one thing that always stood out to me at these meetings was the faculty never associated with the students and postdocs and i don't see that happen here at all it is just a nice amalgam of everybody talking science for the betterment of science and the future of science and the driving force behind that i think is the way the society has been run over the past couple of years so marvin was supposed to be organizing that first meeting in washington dc and uh, he was a wonderful, Marvin was a fantastic idea man. He had more ideas than he had time to, to do, but he was always a little bit lagging in actually doing it himself. He depended on other people to help him with those ideas. So one of the times uh, he was in my lab, I just asked him, how is the meeting going? And he just said, great, great. And I asked, well, have you done the program book yet? And this was about a month or two before the meeting. And I knew he had all the abstracts in. He said, well, I haven't, not, not exactly. Well, have you done the registration materials yet? Well, not exactly. Have you done this? Not exactly. That, not exactly. And I said, I know somebody who could help because my wife was a, is a good organizer. 
and she was staying at home with our son and trying to do some part-time work. So she was willing to do it. They hired her and she essentially put the meeting, to, the actual meeting together. You know, the registration desk, the comp rooms, the meals, the coffee and everything else. And uh, Alex Hollander, who was president and Marvin and Sam Epstein who was treasurer, liked the job she did. So by the end of the meeting, they asked her if she would organize the following meeting. Between Alex and Marvin and Sam and the other mem people who were involved with the society, they knew a lot of people. And a lot of people came in, people whose names I learned during the year I was working there. But it was a success. It worked well. I first came to my first EMGS meeting in 1974. It was in Washington, D.C. And it was Herman Brockman who brought me and many, many others. Herman was my professor. I did my master's and PhD with him. And the wonderful, remarkable fact about Herman is that he produced four EMS presidents. Uh, first was David Brusick. Uh, next was Jim Gentile. Next was me. And uh, as shortly after me was Michael Pleva, and uh, Michael also was treasurer. So Herman was one of the founding fathers. He had been a, a postdoc at Oak Ridge under Fred Desaire, also obviously one of the founding fathers at Oak Ridge. And Alex Hollander, in fact, offered Herman a permanent job uh, after his postdoc at Oak Ridge. But uh, unfortunately, Herman, not knowing whether Alex was actually going to offer him a job or not, was looking for jobs and had been uh, offered the job, obviously, at Illinois State. And so he'd already committed to that. And, uh, you know, you could say it was good and it was bad. And even to this day, Herman is not sure which way it was. Uh, obviously, he loved Oak Ridge and would have loved to have stayed. And obviously, it would have been a, a fabulous thing to do. On the other hand, many of us would not have gotten our education or had the careers we had uh, if he had stayed at Oak Ridge. So we're very grateful that Alex was a day or two late uh, telling him about the job offer and that Herman had already committed to Illinois State. So that's how that went. I don't know who actually made my name, who suggested my name as uh, an editor-in-chief. That's actually something I would like to, to find out. Yeah, so running a journal, it's a choice I do not regret. Well, I, I think I contributed to uh, maintaining EMM as the first uh, journal for in mutagenesis field in terms of impact factor. Um, I have started uh, the um, idea of uh, having the winners of the two major uh, awards that uh, the society give, the EMGS award and the Hollander award, to have them uh, publish an EMM, an article on the subject of their choosing, uh, just because they were the winner of the two awards. I got a submission, I mean, me as editor-in-chief got a submission a couple months ago to EMM through the mail. And it came from a Japanese laboratory. And uh, we finally figured out why, you know, they did that. Uh, when I was editor, Takahiko Nomi wrote out our instructions to authors in Japanese, and they put it up on the website. And it sat there for 15 years or whatever. And apparently no one paid attention to it until some Japanese guy said, oh, Japanese instructions to authors. And he read it and he saw my name as being the editor in chief and he sent it to me and through the mail. And I said, it took me a little while to figure out what had gone wrong. It, this, this was a, you know, a relatively prominent researcher with the, in Japan. So uh, I contacted him and he resubmitted it through the website. So everything was good. <laughs> You know, Hollander was really a primary founder of the society. And his vision was to promote um, the principally uh, radiation uh, toxicology, but also chemicals, and to uh, train others to 
be interested in and work in the, on these things. And in particular, he started the set of courses and symposia in South America. I became interested in the work of the Hollander Committee because I felt, as we all do, that one of the most important things we do as a society is outreach. We have a story to tell, not just a story, it's a warning even to the public. And we have, we work together to teach and to encourage other organizations to join in our mission. And, and that's something that I liked about this society. There, there is a mission in a way, and it's good to, as a scientist, it's a good thing if you feel that your science, in fact, isn't just your hobby, which you are getting fulfillment from, but that it's something for society. In the end, you'd like to do something that makes the world a bit better because you've had a society that helps that. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm also part of the Hollander Committee. <coughs> so we've been working together on that one. And that's that idea that as scientists, we um, have the duty to educate. Yes. And to share and, you know, make it understandable. Indeed. Well, I was actually kind of recruited <laughs> by my other Latin American colleagues from EMGS. Uh, they wanted to keep it a tradition um, to have uh, what what Alexander Hollander started doing. That was uh, getting uh, getting a science out into countries that they didn't have it and technologies and things like that. And uh, for me, it's nice to be able to contribute and help other people. Well, in some ways, I hope it goes back to the future. When the society was first founded, it was on the basis that the society was a, a meeting of world specialists in this field of environmental mutagenesis, genetic toxicology, DNA repair, and that we had something to bring to the table, uh, at least nationally, if not internationally, on critical environmental uh, problems facing at least this country and perhaps many others. And, and so the society played a very key role in the writing and the formulation of the first version of TSCA, uh, one of the really important environmental laws in the United States, as well as many others. And I would like to suggest that this is a role we need to come back to because we really have uh, remarkable people in the society who are world experts on what they do and have something to contribute to the public conversation on really important environmental problems, which of course always in the end translate into a political decision. But there should be at least a scientific basis for those political decisions and our membership can provide that. So uh, I would like to see the future in some ways return to the past. I do hope that the society increases its size and has and fulfills the mission to which it's expanded from when it, when it started off as EMS to have encompassed EMGS, which now has uh, shifted its focus to rapidly adapt new technologies, which we have SIGs for that. What I hope is that over the next 20 years, that this, these biological processes, these germ cell processes and vulnerabilities are appreciated to the extent that those who are in charge of regulation and those who are in charge of testing and those who are in charge of the medical practices will take a step back and ask, oh, what are we doing to the germ cells? And what I found amazing is that our basic principles and theories of how it worked or how you get into the carcinogenesis process or how you get into cancer or how has not changed. The difference is the technology. So now we have technology to prove it. We have technology to do more testing. We have the technology to get more data. So this the speaker from yesterday that he has all these huge databases about the mutational spectra. We knew it existed, like in theory, people have proved it, but we couldn't generate this much amount of data. So 
I actually am very excited. I think with the new data sets, uh, the new way of managing data, generating data, we can we can do more. I don't know what is more, but I, I just find it nice. <laughs> So already I'm seeing a lot of young scientists kind of coming in and, and, and taking charge of a lot of, you know, the individual SIG meetings and, and things. And I think that there's so much more to be explored. And if given the right direction, the young scientists will take this society to where it needs to get to uh, in 20 or 30 years. And I, I think there's a lot of uh, good, the bar was already set pretty high by our predecessors. And you know, given that that generation is getting older, uh, it's really nice to see the young scientists kind of take over, moving things forward. Hi, I'm Bill Kaufman, and I've been a member of EMGS for 19 years. This 50th anniversary meeting of EMGS is special to me because I like old things. I congratulate our membership for keeping EMGS young, vibrant, and forward thinking. EMGS rocks! <laughs>